Oh, you can't have kids, right? It's why I'm doing this. I'm giving you this child. Be thankful. If you can't have your own kid, at least contribute to the society by raising one. What? I struggled to understand what was being said to me, and then, unbelievably, my sister ditched her child dying from an unidentified disease. I hardly understood what a proper parent should do then. We will definitely make that kid happy and make her regret leaving her. My name is Sarah, and I'm 28 years old. I've been a housewife for eight years. For the beginning of my marriage, we were usually pressed by my in-laws and friends who talked about the miracle side of having children. But there was something else, too. They talked about lack of freedom, sleepless nights, and complete selflessness, but my husband and I hated that. It's not because we are bad with children, but it's a fact that we can barely spend time with them. Eight years later, everyone seemed to understand. I know it's selfish, but there are so many things I can do right now that will be unavailable otherwise. Such parents wouldn't be good for a child. By the way, I was raised by my adoptive parents. So I'm not focused on our blood, and I've even thought about adoption when I get older. My husband, Henry, is supportive. He always tells me that I can deceive and raise a kid for us. People who can't have kids can feel jealous about it, but if you have an experience of being betrayed by the abandoned parent, no, you can't. My friends that have kids in their kindergartens and elementary schools seem well-raised. But probably, such children come to this world because their parents really want them. I sometimes think about the two who raised me, and only them. I am especially grateful for the second person. I have an older sister who is two years my senior. Her name is Linda, and our parents wanted to have a sibling but could only have one, so they adopted me. We got along really well when we were young, but then she started to dislike me more and more. If you weren't born, you wouldn't be compared to me, or if you weren't here, all the money would've gone to me. She once told me, adding for the sake of our parents' honor. I must admit that our parents showered not only me mentally, emotionally, and physically, but also my sister. I really don't know why she felt that way. She just chose not to study at all and lied. I did study. That was the only reason she could be mad at me, I suppose. She hated studying. Instead, she decided to become an internet idol. I don't know how, but she used our parents' money to buy all the necessary equipment. Although I guess that having a famous and rather handsome older sister was her in this game. She thought everything was easy if others did it. She once told me that looking at successful people, that was always the problem, underestimating. Thus, Linda decided to marry the most generous among her fans, Mark. He, unfortunately, turned out to be in debt, more than 50K. But our parents wanted to see their grandchild happy by paying off his debt and getting him a job. No, not as a knocker. It was a well-paid job. She could start saving from that money, but she did not. And then one bad day, her child Karen suddenly fell ill. In fact, there were signs of her illness, but Linda thought she was stingy. When I arrived after Linda called me, Karen was lying in bed connected to tubes. I was told the reason I was called. Karen's kidneys were failing. They wanted me to get tested to see if I was a match. I would have said no if it were just Linda, but I was fond of Karen. She was so sensible for a seven-year-old. I often thought she was the kind of daughter I'd like. Thinking I wouldn't be a match, I agreed to the test. But it turned out I was. Please, I'll definitely make it up to you. Save Karen, Linda begged. I wanted to believe that she meant it. After the operation, Karen was out of danger. But that's when the real problems began. Linda hadn't insured her, so the costs were substantial. Then Linda came to me again. Could you help with Karen's treatment costs? I can't ask our parents anymore, and I need this to be kept secret. What about Mark? 
He's got a good salary from the job Dad found for him, right? Linda sneered. That salary is nothing if our parents find out about our spending. Mark might get fired, and we'd be on the streets. Is that what you want? I felt like saying yes, but I couldn't. Not with Karen being used as a pawn. I'll lend you the money, but you have to write a promissory note. Exploiting your daughter's illness is despicable, I said. Fine, fine, I understand. Save the sermon, Linda replied. When she brought the promissory note later, she signed it without even reading. This is why she never saved any money, despite having such parents. Karen turned out well, which impressed me. After that, I began visiting Karen's hospital room more often. Was it because I had donated a kidney, or because I had lent them money? No, it was out of pity for Karen. Karen told me that I visited more than Linda, who now seemed to look at me coldly. After a long course of treatment, Karen ended up needing a wheelchair for mobility. Then on the day she was to be discharged, an incident occurred. An unknown number called, and since it was my day off, I answered. Hello? Hello, is this Sarah's phone? This is General Hospital, Karen's Hospital. Thank you, you have the right number. Sorry to bother you, but Karen's hospital bill is unpaid, and today she's supposed to be discharged. But no one has come for her, and we can't reach her parents. I felt a sudden chill and a rush of heat. My heart clenched. Without realizing it, I was already on my way to the hospital. I got into a taxi and called Linda. Hello. What are you doing today? Is Karen's discharge today, right? I couldn't stay calm and ended up shouting. Can you lower your voice? I can hear you. I don't want that kid, so I'm giving her to you. It's perfect, since you can't have children, right? If you can't have your own, at least contribute to society by raising one. I couldn't believe it. You're the worst, just like my birth parents. You don't deserve to be a parent. And what about the hospital bills? I could hear her laughter over the phone. Sorry, I spent it. It's hard to resist when you suddenly get a lot of money. I've been wanting to do something for a while. It's useless to tell Mark. He can't go against me. He married an idol like he wanted. He can't resist me. He's fine with getting rid of the child anyway. We can't pay, so if you don't take her, she might as well be gone, right? I don't remember, but maybe my birth parents were like this, I thought. This was my battle of mourning, a revenge against the parents who abandoned me. More than anything, I couldn't stand to hand Karen over to Linda. Fine, I'll pay the hospital and surgery bills, and I'll take Karen as my child. Consider it a severance payment. Really? I, uh, I was worried about how to repay the money I borrowed. But you'll pay that too. I've gained a total of $100,000 plus. I can reset my life, getting rid of a daughter in a wheelchair. I should have another child and have them support me in the future. Linda's reason for having children was the worst. I didn't want to talk anymore. I hung up, apologized to the hospital repeatedly, completed the payment, and through lawyers. I arranged a private adoption for Karen to officially become our child. Karen became our child officially. I thought Henry would oppose it, but when I timidly told him afterward, he said, That's why I love you. I can't forgive Linda either. A family of three will surely be fun. And I ended up crying. I'm so grateful to have married such a wonderful person. And that's how Karen officially became our child. My parents probably thought it was best for Karen's rehabilitation and care to be with us. They even offered to help, and Linda seemed a bit resentful, perhaps worried about our parents finding out about the money. She didn't dare come by. When I honestly told Karen, she was surprisingly calm for a seven-year-old. I thought so. 
Mom and Dad never visited me. Now, Sarah, you're my mom. Sorry if I'm not used to it yet. She accepted it, but I knew she had been silently crying in her bed. I used to think I had so many things I wanted to do, but now Karen has become my reason for living. Having been involved with her since birth, albeit indirectly, it didn't take time for me to develop affection. Seeing a young child struggling and crying during rehabilitation, even if she's not my biological child, I felt encouraged to support her. Karen was a real trooper, finding ways to do things despite her disability and always trying her hardest. I forgot about the money and supported her to the fullest. With the help of my parents, Karen grew rapidly. Thanks to rehabilitation, she gained some movement in her right leg. She still needed a wheelchair, but she was able to do more. When Karen turned nine, she said, Mom, I want to be like this person. By then, Karen had gotten used to calling me Mom and Henry Dad. She showed me a video. It was a video of a blind pianist. That's cool, but it must be hard, right? Don't you need a special sense for that? To that, Karen just opened the piano app on her tablet. Then she casually played the piece from the video. I'm shocked. That's amazing. Did you practice a lot? Well, I just listened and remembered it. It's kind of like I just get it. Curious, I played a commercial jingle from TV and asked, Can you play this? And after just hearing it once, she played it effortlessly. That's incredible. Maybe you have perfect pitch. Hey, Henry, look at this. What's going on? It's rare to see you this excited, Sarah. We repeated the whole interaction again. Let's buy a grand piano. And for that, we need a bigger room. Maybe we should build a house. In these two years, Henry had become a doting father, always spoiling Karen. Five years later, Linda, through our parents, reached out. Linda and Mark came for the discussion. I left the kids with my parents and decided to talk in the living room of my childhood home with Henry. I didn't want them to know our current address. So, what do you want? You moved away and cut off all contact. And what's with that figure? I hardly recognize you. I've had some issues with my weight, but that's not important right now. I had heard from my parents that Linda was in the middle of divorce proceedings, apparently due to infidelity, and she had gained a lot of weight from overeating and drinking. Mark was there, seemingly coerced by Linda. He probably wanted to see his daughter one last time. He seemed disappointed not to see her there. Since then, they hadn't had any more children, and I thought it was poetic justice. I should too, Linda asserted. I patiently explained the adoption to Linda. She no longer had parental rights. Linda then blustered one last time. Fine, she's living with a disability anyway. She won't make much money, even if you take her in. I silently showed her a video. What's this? Why is Karen in it? It's got a lot of views. Karen has perfect pitch. If you had paid attention to your daughter, you would have known. We made videos of her playing impromptu piano pieces as part of her rehabilitation, and they went viral. She's now a famous influencer for her beauty and talent, and don't bother trying to take advantage. I've recorded this conversation, and I'll release it if anything happens. Linda hurriedly left, almost fleeing. Since then, Mark had apologized and worked hard, asking my parents for a loan because of the job they'd helped him get. My father trusted Mark after looking into his eyes and decided to lend him the money. He lent it interest-free with a promise that Mark would pay back monthly. My dad said he believed Mark would be fine. Now Linda, with no one to turn to and estranged, was reportedly suffering from diabetes and living on welfare. She was unrecognizable from her days as an internet idol. I thought Karen would thwart my dreams, but now, thanks to her, 
my dreams have come true. That's because after becoming famous, Karen received numerous invitations to perform worldwide, not just as a wheelchair pianist, but for her pure talent. My dream was to travel the world. I fully support Karen as her manager. My husband stays in America, focusing on raising our son. Karen is popular enough to support us with her income alone, yet she loves her brother dearly and often returns to America to spend time with the family. Recently, Karen thanked me out of the blue. What's up? Why suddenly? Because of you, Mom, I have this life. Your kidney inside me will never be apart, and that makes me happy. I'm so glad to have become Karen's parent. The words Karen said to Linda were what I wanted to say to my birth parents. Karen made me feel vindicated. If Linda hadn't been so twisted, maybe her life would have been different. I felt I understood the likely unhappy lives of my birth parents without seeing them. Karen's music enriches the soul. I should too. I patiently explained the adoption to Linda that she no longer had parental rights. Linda then blustered, one last time. Fine, she's living with a disability anyway. She won't make much money even if you take her in. I silently showed her a video site. What's this? Why is Karen in it? It's got Karen a lot of views. Karen has perfect pitch. If you had paid attention to your daughter, you would have known we made videos of her playing impromptu piano pieces as part of her rehabilitation, and they went viral. She's now a famous influencer for her beauty and talent, and don't bother trying to take advantage. I've recorded this conversation and I'll release it if anything happens. Linda hurriedly left, almost fleeing. Since then, Mark apologized. Mark apologized and worked hard, asking my parents for a loan because of the job they'd helped him get. My father trusted Mark after looking into his eyes and decided to lend him the money. He lent it interest-free, with a promise that Mark would pay back monthly. My dad said he believed Mark would be fine. Now Linda, with no one to turn to and estranged, was reportedly suffering from diabetes and living on welfare. No one recognized her from her days as an internet idol. I thought Karen would thwart my dreams, but now, thanks to her, my dreams have come true. Karen received numerous invitations to perform worldwide after becoming famous, not only as a wheelchair pianist, but for her pure talent. My dream was to travel the world. I fully support Karen as her manager. My husband stays in America focusing on raising our son. Karen is popular enough to support us with her income alone, yet she loves her brother dearly and often returns to America to spend time with the family. Recently, Karen thanked me out of the blue, what's up? Why suddenly? Because of you, Mom. I have this life, your kidney is inside me, will never be apart, and that makes me happy. I'm so glad to have become Karen's parent. The words Karen sent to Linda were what I wanted to say to my birth parents. Karen made me feel vindicated. If Linda hadn't been so twisted, maybe her life would have been different without seeing them. I felt I understood the likely unhappy lives of my birth parents. Karen's music enriches the soul.